3, 2, 1, 0 Here comes the countdown, last minute hero Haters be foaming Bloop, bloop, bloop This is the alien fight club 3, 2, 1, 0 Here comes the countdown, last minute hero Haters be foaming Bloop, bloop, bloop This is the alien fight club Hello everyone, this is CM Kozaman And this is the alien fight club ah, To be more understandable today we're gonna be talking about how alien life might potentially realistically look like based on a selection of very interesting examples from earth's natural history but before beginning let's do a little recap of what has happened in the intervening weeks the last time I posted was a month ago and today is the 30th of July 2021. This summer, I will always remember it as the summer of all tomorrows. All tomorrows is a dinky science fiction future evolution book I wrote and illustrated when I was a teenager. And for some reason, I mean, I published it in 2006, but for some reason, this summer, in 2021, it exploded in popularity. And every day, I kid you not, I see new memes, new YouTube videos. I mean, thank you all. It's really making me happy. And this channel has been getting a lot of subs and a lot of followers. So welcome back. Before All Tomorrows, for your information, this channel was dedicated to this kind of content all the time. I was talking about strange historic facts, strange theories about evolution of life on Earth, strange creatures, basically anything that stuck my fancy. But All Tomorrows kind of became a outlying miracle in a way and everyone expects me to talk about all tomorrows all the time but you know what it ends here and now we resume our normal programming before i begin though i would also like to ask all of you new subscribers all you new subs to help me out on patreon.com consider subscribing give a dollar give two Honestly, anything you give really helps me a lot. So thank you so much in advance. You know, all these YouTube videos are for free. But if you feel charitable or if you enjoy them and want to give a little in return, you know, even a subscription of $1 per month really makes a difference for me. So without much ado, let's begin. This is the Alien Fight Club. This is a really catchy Turkish rap song called Fight Club but anyways that's a complete sideline and today we're gonna be talking about how alien life might evolve I mean it would help if you knew a little bit about speculative evolution and speculative zoology but I will try to be as open and as intelligible as even your mom or your cousin could understand it, you know? So, for a long time, people have thought about what alien life might look like, you know, uh, since the last 200 years, maybe even a bit more. I mean, first, when people realized Mars, Venus, Jupiter were actual planets, I'm talking about, like, 1800s, maybe late 1700s, you know, there have been assumptions of life on other planets, at one point, almost every intelligent person like knew there was intelligent life on Mars, for example. Because they thought the canals on Mars uh, looked like man-made structures. And they assumed that only another civilization like ours could make those canals. And, you know, true to the thinking of that time, they imagined the inhabitants of these worlds as like carbon copies of Earth. I mean, sure, yeah, maybe Martians were a bit more brainy or Venusians were a bit more like animal-like, you know, cat people-like. But, you know, they were basically people on a different world. So 
that was like the initial assumption of life on other planets then of course as the 20th century began there was a slew of visions inspired by the literature of pulp science fiction and in these visions alien life was like something basically it was a psychological or psychosocial projection of the outsider i mean the aliens always looked like bugs or creepy reptiles or like weird arcane outdated king type things and you know they were only good for killing i mean they were always trying to attack earth take the world over and they were always rightfully in the views of their their stories they were always beaten back so that was like the shock horror pulp fiction monster version of vision of alien life and then towards the 1970s and 80s i mean science fiction authors like arthur clark and popular science thinkers like carl sagan began to popularize like a true and realistic view of non terrestrial life you know in both the stories of arthur c clark and in an carl sagan's book cosmos there's a vision of life on jupiter for example and jupiter is a gas planet and they imagine the animals there to look like enormous balloons and they are attacked by these flying giant bat like things so it was a kind of it was the first time in which the principles of natural science were used to extrapolate life on another planet i mean arthur clark and carl sagan maybe they were not the first first times but they were close enough for government work let's say so this line of speculation reached a climax actually with the publication of this one book it's called wonderful life and it's written by stephen j gold that's g u g o u l d all these resources are in the video description you can go check them out if you want so stephen j gold's wonderful life said if we play the evolution of life on earth it will be like rolling the same numbers with an infinite number of dice and he said it's damn near impossible to get the kind of life we have on earth today and as evidence for this hypothesis he examined the amazing life forms found in the burgress shale i'm probably butchering that name but the burgress shale or whatever it's a quarry in canada and it's full of these very strange life forms from the cambrian period that is to say the first time in earth's geological history where multicellular animals began to diversify and of course you have got like some really strange forms there like there's something called opabinia which probably had five eyes and the snout that looked like a vacuum cleaner's tube with a couple of jaws on it you know doesn't look like anything there are all these bizarre things there is something called odontogryphus which looks like a floating jelly segmented pancake with a set of plastic halloween dracula teeth embedded in it and then you have also like familiar animals like the ancestors of the first trilobites the ancestors of the first arthropods and even the ancestors of the first vertebrates and you know stephen j gold looked at all these weird creatures and he said that it's only by chance that the vertebrates ancestors survived the cambrian period and the weird things like opabinia odontogryphus or it's kind of become mainstream now anomalocaris and all those they didn't he said it's all due to chance and if we rewound the tape and played it again you would get this completely unintelligible strange alien earths you know in maybe like an opabinia world where everything has five eyes or an odontogryphus world where everything is kind of jelly like 
this was really groundbreaking. I mean, before this book, I mean, it's everyday chump chan, everyday chump change to us, you know? We live and breathe speculative evolution, especially in this channel. But before it was published, you know, now no one had the serious idea to consider the history of life in a sort of what if perspective. That was like a mental paradigm shift. And this book, Wonderful Life by Stephen Jay Gold, is like it must be your bedside reading if you're interested in speculative evolution or like strange creatures in general. It must be a part of your bedtime reading. I kid you not. So this basically the outline for a kind of alien, like real aliens, alien alien world was laid out and it was carried to its logical and extreme conclusion with the publication of Wayne Barlow's immortal work Expedition Life on Darwin 4 if you've been living under a rock or if you're just an outsider welcome outsider this is the CM Kozuman Tavern here, have a glass of eel juice. This is a kind of weird place where all the misfits and outcasts hang out and everyone knows what speculative evolution means. But if you're from the outside world, you'll be really surprised by this book Expedition by Wayne Barlow. He's like the great grandfather of all speculative evolution artists out there before him a few people have tried but before Barlow's work there was nothing like it you know nobody considered about looking at life on alien worlds in terms of art and it's a gorgeous art book it's really colorful the paintings are wonderful spellbinding but like this is the closest I'll come to critiquing this amazing work on the, on Darwin 4 this alien aliens paradigm, you know, first coined by Wonderful Life, it's taken to a, a logical extreme, but an extreme extreme. I mean, there are animals with jet engines in their legs, there are animals with three feet, there are animals with four feet, there are balloon animals, there are quadrupedal animals, there are animals with no eyes, because eyes never evolved in the first place according to this book but everything has biological lights everything has these glow-in-the-dark patterns on their skin it's a really wild and bizarre and surrealistic world plants glow in the dark but like there's a kind of plant that's actually an animal that butchers prey but there's also like no nothing has jaws also everything has these like sharp beaks they stab each other with them and <laughs> drink them so it's a really wild world, but like the closest I could come to a critique about this book is that few of the animals seem related. I mean, I, there's like a very generic classification of life in this in this book. Like there's monopod aliens, bipedal aliens, tripedal aliens, but then tripedal aliens also come in like one front leg versus one rear leg varieties, and it's all a bit confusing. And even though the creatures are amazingly well realized in terms of artwork if you put them all together as ecosystems you know hmm, some things don't really make sense they don't seem to be descended from each other except for like certain little clumps of groups but of course uh, a counter critique to that could be to say that well maybe this world is one billion years older than earth so life has had so much longer to evolve. So you get these all these disparate and seemingly unrelated weird groups. Or maybe life evolves in a completely different way in this world. I mean, it could be anything. There is something on Darwin 4, there is something that looks like a giant amoeba that covers 15% of the planet's surface. Heck, who knows, maybe that amoeba creature designs and creates 
all those other animals like some sort of real life intelligent designer or maybe in this world you got something like a massive amount of lateral gene transfers you know so animals not only reproduce directly but you could have things like a tree borrowing genes from a rattlesnake or something like that i mean who knows but like to get to the gist of the deal darwin for an expedition takes this alien aliens theory to an extreme and ever since we have been trying to uh, visualize alien worlds in terms of entire new vocabularies that is to say like if you have an earth like planet we expect it to look nothing like earth we we'll, we expect its animals or plants to look nothing like earth you know each time we have to invent a whole new group whole new arrangement of legs this is very common in some speculative evolution projects out there and heck you know i mean we only have a sample size of one so maybe that is the right way but then again to get to the real flesh and blood of this video i'm going to be proposing a new hypothesis about how real aliens might be expected to look like and this is where all the amazing images on this video image come to play a few years ago i saw this amazing photograph of a beetle that's the big image in the video picture here it's actually a beetle it looks like a gecko doesn't it no but actually it's a south american beetle of the genus tetraphylurus or tetraphylurus but it looks just like the face of a gecko granted the rest of the beetle doesn't look too much like a gecko but you know this really got my noggin jogging it really got me thinking i mean were we wrong to go for this completely outlandish alien route at least for imagining earth like planets i mean here is an insect you know an insect's head has been evolved out of basically bunches of legs mashed together in a box but still it has taken a shape that's almost the same as a gecko lizard i mean check out the gecko on the top right corner if you squint you would say they're almost the same thing the placement of the eye an insect eye is nothing like a vertebrate eye it's made out of thousands of little pixel eyes and it's got no it's got no wet works and it's all crystalline but it's the still it's still the same shape same location on the same head unbelievable it really got my noggin jogging then you know i had this like epiphany you know like i had this like fancy grand oaz ideas i was going to write a scientific article I even had a fancy ass title for it inferring potential forms of macrofauna life on potential earth-like planets from interphyla convergences on earth that was going to be the title of my scientific article hmm and i was going to like give a lot of references write all high and mighty and shit and i was going to like send it to International Journal of Astrobiology published by Cambridge University but then this project languished but then I thought wait a minute this is going to make a real great YouTube video and you know it's just a hypothesis and it's going to reach far more people this way I'm I'm certain of it but it really got me thinking I got I looked started looking at all these other examples for example one day oh wait I'll be right back. So one day I just had the urge to look at images of sun spiders. Oh my god, what's this sound? It's like a club is about to begin. Oh my god! It's fight club. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It's the alien fight club. It's the alien fight club. It's my favorite Turkish rap song. Well, one of them, but 
Man, I just felt like singing it. I just had to get it out of my mind. So where were we? Okay, this gecko. No, no, this this beetle that looked like a gecko. It really got my noggin jogging. Then I wanted to write a scientific article about the convergence, the massive convergence we see in life forms from wildly different origins. And I wanted to call this drastic phenotypical convergence dpc it sounds like a bad designer drug but actually it's not it's the term i made up for this scientific article i hope to write but it's much easier and cooler to do this as a youtube video so i began to look up other examples of drastic phenotypical convergence in the world i wasn't looking for examples of convergent evolution directly but I was looking for body plans or features that were extremely similar across different groups of earthly evolution. Then one day I was just looking at sun spiders because, you know, what's there not to love about them? They're amazing animals. They're built like tanks. They're like spiders, but hyperactive, hyper predatory, amazing animals. I mean, an entire day spent looking at scientific articles about solifuge, solif solifuges or sun spiders it's not a wasted day it's a great day and i was having a great day then i saw the images of these sun spider pedipalps no they're not pedipalps they're chelicare the sun spider biting organs i mean sun spiders are chelicarates or calicarates, however you spell that. And they got these like pincer-like mouth organs. And it's a characteristic they share with spiders, scorpions, whip scorpions and all the rest. Remind me one day I have to do a huge illustrated YouTube video about all the strange and weird groups of arachnids. And this is one of my promises to you. Anyways, I was looking at images of sun spider selikera and like you could see one of their images at the lower right corner the kind of thing that looks like a beak but it actually looks so much like the skull of a leopard i mean it was as if this sun spider had these twin leopard heads tearing apart and ch chewing its prey you know unbelievable convergence i mean just look at their images they're at the lower corners of this image one of them is an arachnid and it's not even part of its skull technically it's the mouth part but it looks so similar to a leopard skull if the leopard didn't have a brain and didn't have to support its eyes in its skull its skull would probably be the exact same shape instead of a slightly similar shape but it's an amazing convergence don't you think it's an amazing dpc drastic phenotypical convergence wow i mean then i was like okay i'm on to something here um, who knows maybe i am then i found out all these strange animals they're still alive today i mean there's a kind of sea slug named Filiroe or something I'm probably butchering the scientific name it's P-H-Y-L-L-I-R-O-E and it's a sea slug you know it's got it's nothing like a fish yet its body has evolved the same layout the same fins the same tail structure as that of a little fish and then there's an entire other phylum of strange arrow worms. They're, you can see them at the extreme left-hand bottom corner. I mean, they're worms from a widely different group, you know. Yet they still look like little fishlets, fish tadpole things. I mean, of course... I mean, in the sea, it's very easy to evolve a convergent shape. But, I mean, look at all of these things together, you know. 
you got the head of a small animal that lives in the underbush. You got the jaws of a leopard, a predatory cat, versus the mouth parts of a spider-like hyper-predatory arthropod. They're all rhyming. Like George Lucas says, it's like poetry, it rhymes. <laughs> BPC, my man. Drastic, phenotypical convergence. This is why my idea about alien life changed. You know, instead of visualizing extremely different or wildly like alien surrealistic forms, I now believe that if we went to an Earth-like planet, the operative world being world being earth-like we would see like the silhouettes of similar animals if we squint they would be very similar like there would be something hairy shuffling underfoot it would look maybe like a stoat but of course if you saw it would be the same shape very roughly but if you look at looked at its anatomy maybe its jaws its mouth its limbs would be derived from massively de different origins I mean, maybe they wouldn't be descended from the fins of a land-going fish, but who knows, maybe they would be the, I don't know, calcium-based descendants of skin nodules or something, you know? I mean, the animal would still look and move in a vaguely similar shape, in a similar way, but it would have, of course, like a completely different origin. I'm trying to say that life on earth like planets put similar pressures on similar groups of life and they kind of end up looking slightly similar like here's my idea their shadows would be very similar of course there are counter examples too and maybe i'm just wrong for example if you look at mammals versus dinosaurs they're pretty closely related i mean they're all land going vertebrate animals yet dinosaurs had this kind of bipedal solution to predatory life and mammals never really got off their four feet i mean you got a lion and something like an allosaurus they're both macro predators but they look really different you know their shadows are not similar so there's a counter example there's also another counter example with cephalopods versus fish. I mean, I show you all these extremely fish like worms and mollusks. But then you got squid, which travel like completely backwards and they have a jet propulsion system. They're really cool. I mean, in a planet without fish, maybe you would have more squid. And maybe we would assume that would be the way to travel in the sea and i mean there are many other examples so you know there's still room for doubt but i mean all these strange examples i've showed you today i don't think they're for nothing anyways also also keep in mind that this hypothesis of dpc drastic phenotypical convergence it doesn't apply to broad terms like intelligence, you know. If we went to an Earth-like world, we would probably not see a human-like intelligent species. I mean, an intelligent species could look like a bird, it could look like an octopus, it could look like ants, who knows. I mean, there are wildly different thrones of consciousness on our planet, so it doesn't apply to general subjects like general broad terms such as intelligence or a predator or whatever. And I think there are some really neat examples. For example, uh, Biblaridion, he's a YouTube content creator with a wildly more successful channel than mine. And his world, he's, he's uh, running a channel about the evolution of life on an alien planet. And this world really has dpc going and i think it's what makes it such a good and successful project so in this world the stem animals are 
eight-legged, roughly spider-like things. But as they adapt to macrofaunal niches, like that of a bear or a forest predator, they end up, their silhouettes end up looking similar to that of an earth bear or an earth weasel or an earth stoat. Of course, there are some really wild different forms too, but roughly they seem to be rhyming. And that's a good thing. But, you know, maybe 20 years ago, we would say, it doesn't look alien enough. It looks too earthly. Too, the legs are the same. But, you know, why shouldn't the legs be the same? Why shouldn't the eyes be the same? Why shouldn't the teeth or jaws be the same? And why shouldn't they look the same even if they have different origins? So there, there you go, everyone. It's my two cents. It's my hypothesis about drastic phenotypical convergence. In conclusion, I am now closer to believing, and at this stage, we only know of Earth for certain, so it's only a game of beliefs at this stage, but still, I'm very close, I'm closer than otherwise to believing that an Earth-like alien world may have alien organisms, which from a distance would resemble animals from Earth's natural history in general. But a close inspection of such animals would reveal different organ systems and natural histories. In the fashion displayed by the various examples I just showed you all, we may expect life to rhyme, rhyme, rhyme. Deeny. You want the bloop 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 song again? I'm gonna sing along this time. Oh my god, let me, I switched it off, wait, wait, okay, it's time to rock, but what do you think, you know, do you think the drastic phenotypical convergence theory is sound, or do you think it's just a bunch of crap, I mean, if you disagree with me, I would actually welcome it, because this is just like the sketch of a hypothesis, it's nothing concrete, but you know, with more thought, maybe it could launch a new paradigm in the way we think about alien life. And in doing so, it may help our own speculative evolution projects. So there. And also, another constant in life, in this world or the rest, is the need for money, for survival. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing to me on patreon.com you know you'd be welcome three two one zero last one i count down here come a hero haters be forming bloop, bloop, bloop. here's the alien fight club oh my god have a nice day everyone this has been cian kozaman alien fight club and i hope you have a good day good time wherever you are. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.